Welcome students, it's Dr. Mike. Let me give you some quick tips on NetLab use. We use NetLabs in a few of our classes and I thought this would be very handy to help you uh, get logged in and get your labs completed. So first off, when you log in, uh, the username itself here is usually your student ID. Now it's gonna depend on if we have leading zeros or not. So uh, please check with your professor on your login ID. Uh, the password also will be a one-time first use password. When you, after you log in, you'll need to set your own password. So after that's done, you need to go back and log in again with your new password. And we're presented with the NetLab screen. Let's see. Okay. This is the, really the home screen for NetLab. The main thing here is if I have any reserved labs or if I want to reserve myself a new lab. So I'm going to schedule a lab for myself right there. Now, if you have different access to different lab, different types of labs, um, in this case, I have the Network Plus labs, but there's also, for example, Security Plus, you have a selection screen. For this account, my test account here, I only have access to the Network Plus labs. So I come right to the screen with the lab list. Here you can see the lab name. And then the action over here, this action button, we can actually preview the lab. This will give you a PDF you can download, keep for yourself. This has step-by-steps um, for the lab itself. We'll look at that again in a second. And again, you can click on the action to schedule a lab. Or if you already know what the lab is, you can just click on the lab name itself and that'll take you to the scheduling screen. So what we have is date time up here at the top, and then here we have a list of pods in the middle. So pod one, pod two, etc. You wanna find yourself an empty pod that's not being used. And you notice my pointer, do not click here, click here. And with this current version of NetLab, you need to get as close as you can to that red line and then make a click. And here you can see there is a starting date and time. And right now it's giving me 29 minutes. And of course you need to tell yourself uh, that's not gonna be long enough to do my lab. Uh, you might want at least an hour. Normally you can do two hours for the lab. Um, but in case if you accidentally hit submit, when the lab does come to the last 15 minutes, it will ping you uh, in the UI if you want to extend your time. But for now though, for, I'm going to set myself up a little longer. There's an hour and a half. That's plenty of time to do my lab. So again, I use this button right here and I selected some more time. When I'm ready to go, I hit submit. You can see it was successfully reserved. Lab uh, schedule 3879. I click OK. And you can see my lab is here. And since I've reserved it right away, I have the enter lab button. And when I click on that, it's gonna initialize the lab. This might take a minute, depends on the load on the servers. What this does though, is this actually fires up a series of virtual machines. So across the top, you have access to the topology, which you can see the two networks, the firewall I have some Windows boxes, a Linux box. Here's that content tab again. This has a PDF for all the uh, all the different steps with the lab. And in the, in, in the PDF itself is a passwords. Access a box. You can click on the topology itself. And we'll jump to the tab. We'll click on the tab and it will also show you the box itself. So here we have the Linux box, here's a Windows box, and the content. A couple of notes here. This little button up here in the top, it's a very handy way to um, take this tab and open a new window if I wanted to. So if I want to have this in a full screen, I can have it there. 
Nice if you have multiple monitors and you want to have the PDF in a different tab. This can also happen with the boxes themselves, the virtual machines. I can click on that. I can undock it or dock it, change the scale display, uh, the actual size. And a special note here, on the systems themselves, you can see I can send control delete. So when it comes to Windows servers, you can see it says here, press control delete in the center of the screen to log in. You don't want to do control delete on your keyboard, on your host machine. You want to send it from here. If I do it on my keyboard, I will actually get control delete um, on my host system. So here's my password. And this is logging into the Windows machine. For Linux machines, uh, Backtrack and Kali, they start with, at the very bottom of the screen here, a basic command line login. So normally this is root, and the password is normally Tor, T-O-R. When you type it, it will not show anything on the screen. So passwords do not are not echoed back in the terminal. So your keyboard's not broken. This is the way it's supposed to work. You can see it did work. I'm logged in. I have my prompt. And to start my GUI, it's the command start x. S T A. If I can type correctly. S T A R T X. This will start the X Windows server. And it'll give me my backtrack GUI. So now I have all my systems are up and running. I'm logged in. I have items to do. These are full servers. You can do which, what you need to do for the lab. You can uh, try stuff out. This one we're done. Nothing is saved. There's no persistence in these systems. So with that note, though, if I have some work here, make sure I have plenty of screenshots. I've taken my notes. Uh, because when you're done and you want to end your reservation, which is up here at the top, after you end it, uh, everything is gone. So just be, be wary that you have all your steps completed, all your notes and screenshots are taken. So I am done. I'm going to end reservation now. Yes, I do want to end. I am finished. And this is a good thing to do, please, because it helps um, free up time for other users. And it has ended my reservation. And I'll go back to my main screen. I can schedule another lab. Or when I'm done, I come here and I can log out. Hope that was helpful.